There are six different options for exporting your analysis data to XLS format, which can be used in Microsoft Excel, Google Sheets and other spreadsheet programs. Each spreadsheet contains your collected data, but in slightly different formats. This is especially useful if you're going to utilize third-party tools such as Tableau or Power BI, which can handle much larger data sets. In this video, we'll go through each of these options and show you the differences between them all. You'll see how each of these formats could be useful in different situations. So, let's get started. There are two places where you can export to Excel in Naxport. Firstly, in the My Analysis area. You simply highlight the analysis you want to export and then click on this icon. Name your spreadsheet and choose where you want to save it. Naxport will export your data and when finished will ask you if you want to open the exported file. Secondly, from the timeline, you can export your data by clicking on this icon. From here, there's an extra step which allows you to filter the data you want to include in your spreadsheet. You can choose which categories to include in your export. Additionally, by clicking this box, you can choose whether or not to include any coordinate data you have collected with a graphic descriptor. After making your selections, click here to export your data. Choose the name and location, and again, once the export has finished, you'll be given the option to open the file straight away. The sixth option is to export to Excel from the data matrix. We'll talk about this later. Export option one basically lists all your registers in chronological order, from top to bottom. As you can see, you have a column for all the categories you have clicked, one for descriptors and one for the time it was clicked. The start time and end time are here, relating to the time in the video, and the entire duration of the register is here. The duration depends on the pre and post times you set for your buttons for automatic categories, and for manual categories, the time that you start and end the register. Any notes you've added to the register appear here. This option is useful, for example, for seeing how long a period of possession was until the team got into a shooting position. Excel option 2 is similar to option 1, but the formatting is slightly different. Again, we have a list of categories here, listed in chronological order. But this time, instead of having our descriptors in a separate column, they are, instead, laid out in the same row in the order they were clicked. For example, for this period of possession, you can clearly see the players that participated in each play, or simply the number of actions that happened within this category. Essentially, this is how your data is displayed in the play-by-play -play table during the registering phase of the analysis, and may be easier to process than option one. The choice is yours. You can see the start, end, and click time here. We've also got a new column appearing here, which is for XY data. This contains the coordinates of your clicks on the graphic descriptor. For more info on graphic descriptors, see the link in the description. Export option three relates directly to the data matrix. Like in the previous two options, this column contains a list of all our registered categories in chronological order with start, click, end times and XY coordinates here. But this time, our descriptors are displayed in each column in the same order as they are in the data matrix. In the data matrix, you can see that the first two descriptors are assist and lost ball. In the spreadsheet, the first two descriptor columns are the same, as are the rest of the columns. You can't see how many times a descriptor has been clicked like in option 2, but this gives a quick visual record about what's going on in the game. Change the display order of the matrix by dragging and dropping the categories, and this will be reflected in the spreadsheet. See the video in the description for more details. Options 4 and 5 are basically the same, with only one small difference. A column in option 5 which contains your text notes. These two options are simplified versions of the previous three and do not contain any information about your descriptors. These two options are more related to the video time and are useful if you're interested in the total duration of your actions. As you can see, registered categories again appear in this column in chronological order. We have the start, click and end times and the XY coordinates in this column. 
and that's it. How can you use this? Well, for example, if you want to see the duration of all your zipper plays, you can filter categories so they appear in alphabetical order. Now we have all the zipper plays grouped here. As we said, this is a simplified view of your data without the descriptor data. Remember, although we haven't covered it in detail here, there is a six option, which exports the data matrix and shows the relationship between categories and descriptors. This is another extremely powerful option. Check out the data matrix video in the description. And that's it. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And to keep up to date with all the latest Naxport news, why not subscribe to the channel? Thanks, and see you next time.